In this video, we are still solving exponential equations, but now we have a radical. So what am I going to do with that? Well, for the most part, I want you to ignore the fact that there's a radical right now, because the first thing you have to identify is the common base between the left and the right sides of the equation. So if I ignore this radical, this is a 3, and 3 is really as simple as you can get. It's not a, it's not a power of anything, it's just, a, I guess, a power of itself, like 3 to the first is 3. And 9, well, 9 is based on 3, right? Because you can rewrite 9 as 3 squared. So let's do that. Rewrite 9 as 3 to the second power raised to the x. And on the right side, you've got to remember how to rewrite something like this. How do we rewrite radicals? Well, in case you have forgotten, let me remind you of something from our dealings with radicals and rational exponents. Okay, So if I have x to the 1 over n power, that means the nth root of x. Uh, the other little statement that we had to go along with this is if I have x to the m over n, the denominator, remember, is the index of the radical. and the numerator is your power. Now, right now I'm writing it inside the radical. Typically I would write it on the outside just to help us with simplifying, but for the problems that we're gonna be seeing here in this section, I want you to make sure you understand that the index is the denominator of the power, and the numerator of the power is just the big power for that expression. So that means if I take this piece right here, the seventh root of three, so just kind of playing around with it over here, um, the seventh root of three, the base is three. This is understood to be to the first power, write that if it helps you. This is three to the one over seven. Look at the expression we have up here. The index matches with the denominator of your power. So my index is seven, that's going to be the denominator of my power when I write that as a rational exponent. So the right side of the equation, just which we what we see over here is 3 to the 1 seventh. All right. Well, as we were showing before, a power to a power means we're going to take these powers and multiply them. So we end up with 3 to the 2x is equal to 3 to the 1 seventh. Well, now we have the same base, which is a requirement for us to set the powers equal to each other. And right now, this is going to be what we do. We find the common base, we rewrite the left and right side so that you have the same base, and you equate the powers by saying 2x is equal to 1 over 7. Now, later on, we're going to see how to deal with equations where the left and the right sides don't have a common base. Uh, it's really not too bad, but we'll see that you know, in a few sections. All right, so now I need to solve this equation. It looks to be easy enough. Um, there's two ways of doing it. The quick, easy way is to recognize that you have a fraction over here. And if you're dealing with a fraction, you should already be thinking about fractions. So in order to get rid of the 2, you could divide by 2, or what we've done in the past, which is to multiply times its reciprocal. So I can multiply both sides of the equation times the reciprocal of the coefficient, which is 1 half. And keep in mind that multiplying times 1 half is the same thing as dividing by 2. So it's really this exact same step. But I'm showing this as multiplication times 1 half because on the right side of the equation, when I multiply times 1 half, it's, it's pretty simple how this simplifies. Those reduce x equals, and now you have the product of two fractions. And to multiply two fractions, you multiply the numerators to get 1, multiply the denominators to get 14. And that's our answer. Now, here is another way that you could have solved this. It's really all, it's up to you. Uh, what works best for you? So here's what a lot of students like to do, is that they would like to take this equation right here and say, you know what, it's got fractions. I don't like fractions, so I'm going to clear them out. And the way we clear out the fractions is to multiply both sides times the LCD, which in this case is seven. 
So 7 times 2x is 14x. And on the right side, uh, those 7s reduce, and I'm left with 1. So now you have an equation. You have a linear equation, and you don't have fractions anymore. You finish getting x by itself by dividing by the coefficient of 14. And wouldn't you know it, we get the same answer that we had the first time. x is equal to 1 over 14. That wasn't too bad, right? The key thing, again, is to identify the, the common base that the left and the right sides have. All right, let's try another one. So we just did a problem that contained radicals. Let's see what happens when fractions are there from the very beginning. So 49 raised to the x plus 2 is equal to the fraction 1 7 raised to the x plus 5. Well, I hope that you can see that there is something going on between both sides of the equation that involves a 7, right? 49 can be written as a 7, and we can write this as 7 squared, and then still with that power, x plus 2. And what about 1 over 7? See, I think this is another thing that students tend to forget, is how to work with fractions and powers. So here's the, little, the, the note for us. x to the negative n power means 1 over x to the n. Okay. So that means if I wrote 5 to the negative third power, for example, we would first rewrite this as 1 over 5 to the third. Well, going from a negative to a non-negative power is as simple as doing the reciprocal. But you can also go backwards because we have an equation here. So if you have 1 over 5 to the third, you can rewrite that as 5 to the negative third. So right now in our example, we have 1 over 7 to the first. Since that's in the denominator, that means we have a negative power when I rewrite this without the denominator, or without the, the fraction, excuse me, and we would have 7 to the negative first. So this is a trick we're going to be employing quite a bit when we solve these equations. So if I just had 7, you would say that's 7 to the first. But since it's in the denominator, we know that's going to be 7 to the negative first, like that. So keeping that in mind, just a, another quick example to make sure we understand how the negative powers work. If I wrote 1 over 16, well, we can understand that this is 1 over 2 to the fourth power, which means 2 to the negative fourth. So if we had to rewrite this as a base of 2, that's what you would do. So kind of a, a more of a shortcut way, as long as you know your powers. You could do this. All right, 16 is based off of 2, and it's 2 to the 4th. But since it's in the denominator, it's 2 to the negative 4th, right? Because it's the negative power that causes it to be in the denominator. All right, so we've now written each side with the common base of 7. And we don't have the 7 in the denominator. We don't have it inside of a radical or anything weird. And so now we have a power to a power. So we're going to have to multiply these and... We'll have to do the same thing on the right side. So this becomes 7 raised to the 2x plus 4. Please remember that this 2 isn't just 2 times x. It's 2 times that whole group, so it has to distribute and hit the 2 as well, which is where we get the 4. On the right side, this is 7. Multiply this, so negative x. Negative times positive 5 is negative 5. And now... Since we have the same base, we can write our equation where our variables aren't in the powers anymore, but they're on that nice plain level where we like to see them. So this becomes 2x plus 4, and we bring down the negative x minus 5 on the right side. So let me caution you about something. Once you have the same base, as we've mentioned, it's the powers that are equal. 
okay? You are not, you are not doing seven times two x plus four. Seven doesn't distribute, it's just the base. All right, so now that we have this equation, it's linear, of course. I want to get all of the x's to the same side. The easiest way is to add x to move it from the right to the left. And if I'm moving my variables to the left, that means my constants need to go to the right. So I'm going to subtract four on both sides of the equation. And now we are left with three x on the left and negative nine on the right side. And all it takes is one final little step to finish getting x by itself. So x is equal to negative three. The main idea is to be able to rewrite each side of your equation to have the same base. And once you have the same base, you can equate those powers. That becomes your equation. That's what you solve. So it's a few steps to get it to a nice linear equation, things we've been doing forever and ever, it seems like. We solve that, we got x equals negative 3.